What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. this is Robbie in Manila, and today we are on a quest to figure out the best zero commission broker. So I put a lot of time into this video, a lot of research, a lot of effort, and I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna really help you. So there's five main brokers that I think should be on your radar that I think are worth looking into, and those are the five we're gonna compare today. So the first broker on our comparison list is Vanguard. And Vanguard is a cult favorite of index fund investors because it was founded by the father of index fund investing, John Bogle. The next broker we're going to compare is Fidelity, which is the largest broker dealer in the USA. So next we're going over my personal brokerage, which is Charles Schwab. And it's got a lot going for it right now because it just acquired TD Ameritrade. Lots of interesting things in the future for Schwab. Next we have Robinhood, which is the original commission-free investment app. It's arguably the reason why all these other brokers are now commission-free. Next is M1 Finance, which is newer than Robinhood, but really a worthy competitor that we should be looking at. To really get a great idea of the brokers and which one's going to be best for you, I'm going to separate them into two different categories. So our first category today is what I refer to as like the fintech category, and that's going to have Robinhood and M1 Finance. And the other category has the old school brokers, so that's Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and Vanguard. So we're going to dive into these brokers and we're going to figure out what the best broker is. We're going to look at the products, we're going to go look at the accounts they offer, we're going to look at the different fees that are associated outside of the commission free part. We're going to look at a ton of stuff. Okay, so I think that's enough of the intro. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so as we get started, there is a secret I'm going to tell you. It's very important and you should really listen to this part. It is that you can get commission-free likes by hitting the like button. Yeah? Stupid? <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, I do have some affiliate links below if you want to support my channel. One is for Robinhood, one's for M1 Finance, so if you're interested in opening any of these up, please use those links because it really helps support my channel. Okay, the first thing we're doing is we're gonna ask a question, and the question is, can the fintech brokers, can any of these brokers beat any of the old school brokers? So that's the first thing we're gonna try to figure out. We're gonna start with looking at the fintech brokers. Okay, I got a little graphic here, and we're gonna try to figure out which of these is gonna be best for you between the fintech brokers, so Robinhood and M1 Finance. First thing I need you to know is that we're looking at the free accounts. So you can have a free account with both these brokers or you can have a paid version. So we're first focusing on just the free part. There are three different accounts that we want to compare. The taxable brokerage account, which if you're not familiar with that, it just is like the general account. There's no limit to how much money you can put into it. And if you buy a stock in this account and then it makes a gain and you sell the stock, you owe capital gains taxes. Both Robinhood and M1 Finance offer a taxable brokerage account. So that's the most common kind of account. And next we have an IRA, an individual retirement account. Now Robinhood doesn't offer an IRA or a Roth IRA. So if you want some type of tax advantaged account, you're not gonna be able to get that with Robinhood at least at this point in time when I'm making this video right now. But M1 Finance does actually offer that. So that is a good thing. So if you're interested in a tax advantaged account, like a Roth IRA or an IRA, you can go ahead with an M1 Finance account. If we take a look at the different types of securities, we can see, of course, we have commission-free stocks, which this video is about the best commission-free broker, so of course they both have commission-free stocks. You do not have to pay a commission to these brokers when you buy a stock. Same with ETFs. So, both Robinhood and M1 Finance, you can buy stocks and ETFs without paying a commission. The next thing we want to look at is cryptocurrency. So if you're someone who's interested in crypto, uh, only one of these is going to be for you, and it is Robinhood, because M1 Finance doesn't offer crypto at this point in time. So the crypto investors, they're going to probably want to go with Robinhood. So Robinhood does not offer auto investing and M1 Finance does offer auto investing. What is auto investing? Uh, basically, if you want money to go straight into your M1 Finance account, you can have that happen. Let's say once a month you want to put $500 into your account and then you want that $500 to be invested automatically into your portfolio of different stocks or ETFs, you can do that. So next we have auto rebalancing. So what is auto rebalancing? Think of it like this. Let's say you have only two stocks in your portfolio. I mean, of course, you should have a more diversified portfolio, but let's just say for an example, you only have two stocks. 
Now let's say one of those stocks is Tesla. And as we know, Tesla this year has made crazy amounts of money, right? So a big gain in Tesla. And then let's say your other stock is just in a normal stock, like uh, Home Depot, for example. Well, Tesla has gained way more than Home Depot. Now, maybe you want to make sure that you have the same allocation of those two stocks going forward. So you could hit a button and ML Finance is going to rebalance it. So instead of you having, let's say, because Tesla gained so much and you having 75% of your whole portfolio in Tesla, and only 25% in Home Depot, suddenly it's going to balance them back to 50-50. So that's what automatic rebalancing does. So when you have a ton of stocks, a bunch of ETFs, this can be a great way to kind of keep your portfolio in balance. All right, so that's a free account. Now, both M1 Finance and Robinhood offer something called premium accounts. And so Robinhood has Robinhood Gold, M1 Finance has M1 Plus. So we're gonna compare those two also in case you are interested in one of these paid versions. So the first thing we're gonna look at is in the premium account for Robinhood, options. So there are options available with Robinhood and there are not options available with M1 Finance. I'm actually very impressed at Robinhood because they have a zero commission options trading. So you can go ahead and buy options with Robinhood and not have to pay a commission. Whereas if you go to any of the other old school brokers, you do have to pay a commission for options contracts. So for example, it's a dollar if you wanna buy a Vanguard contract, 65 cents with Fidelity and Schwab. So it's actually a great advantage to have options here if you're an options investor. Next is margin. So Robinhood and M1 Finance both offer margin. So the next thing we have is research. Now, Robinhood does offer uh, some research from something called Morningstar, which is a great research firm. So if you're interested in using research to help you find stocks, invest in the markets, then Robinhood's gonna allow you some access to research and when finance does not have any access to research checking accounts is the last thing we're gonna go over and they both offer checking so if you're interested in a checking account at this point in time when I'm recording this Robinhood's uh, APY is 0.30% and M1 finances is 1% this is something very important that I think everyone should know if you have a research um, with Robinhood and this is why you want this account so if you want the premium account with Robinhood because you want research, it doesn't make any sense because you can go to any of the old school brokers that we're gonna look at next and they have their own research available and they have, at least Charles Schwab, has Morningstar research available for free. So you need to want some of this other stuff, in my opinion, to want to open up uh, one of these fintech robo-advisors and use their premium accounts. So of course with these fintech brokers, the platform, the app is very important for a lot of people. It's one of the distinguishing factors of why you might go with this over one of the older type of brokers. So first off, in my opinion, this is gonna be subjective, but uh, I think Robinhood is great. I find myself going all the time into Robinhood to just check stock prices. So if I wanna see, for example, I don't know, everyone loves Tesla. So, hey, I made a Tesla video, by the way. Link it up here if you wanna watch it. So I'd go in and I'd look at Tesla and I'd see, okay, well, what's great is there's candlestick charts, which is uh, something that I think is very important for us to understand when looking at charts, but you can also go to a line chart. Uh, and then, so that's good. Next up, I kinda like to see just maybe some news. If you want to, you can type in different browse things, top 10 most popular. The thing is with this, while it's got great functionality, it's got a great interface, it's nice looking, there's not a lot of stuff in it that is gonna help me find new stocks, not like the kind of Charles Schwab's and the Fidelities. So next, let's take a look at M1 Finance. So M1 Finance is totally different than Robinhood, and actually it's the most unique in terms of the interface and the experience and how they've really structured the whole app and investing experience. So the reason is they use something called pies and they automatically group all of your stocks into a pie. And a pie is a kind of um, a visual way to understand and see what your stocks are invested in. I can add to my pie. There's the rebalance button right here, okay? So tons of different things you can do. I think in terms of the user experience and the way that you can kind of see this visually, I think it's amazing for a lot of investors, especially new ones. Just for general, 
great app experience. I do like it. I like both of them. Um, but I do think M1 Finance could be better for new beginners because of the visualization of the pies, in my subjective opinion. So as I mentioned, Robinhood Gold is the premium account for Robinhood, and then M1 Finance has M1 Plus. So you're probably wondering how much the cost is. So it's $5 per month for Robinhood Gold, while M1 Finances is $125 for the year. So a little bit less money for the Robinhood than the M1 Finance. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of these two different brokers. So these are the FinTech brokers, like I said. We're gonna look at the older brokers, like the, the old school brokers next. Now at the end, I'm gonna kinda of compare them all and then we can see which one's gonna be the best maybe for you. So let's move on to these older brokers or the old school brokers or the traditional brokers. Okay, so the first thing we have on these is the commonalities. So we're gonna look at what these all kind of have in common first then we're gonna look at the distinguishing factors. So what are the differences? Of course, the first thing we see, commission-free trades. They're all the same. They all have checks. Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, all commission-free. What are the different types of things that are available? Stocks, ETFs, index funds, mutual funds, options, and bonds. Now, what you need to know is that, like I said before, options, for example, are not commission-free with these brokers. So when I say commission-free trades, here I'm referring to index funds, mutual funds, and uh, ETFs, stocks, okay, those things. Um, not options, So, but they do offer options. Next, we have what types of accounts are available. So like we saw before, Robinhood only has a taxable brokerage account, and when finance has an IRA, a Roth IRA, and a taxable brokerage. These have lots of different accounts. They are the grown-up brokers so they have like anything you're gonna ever really need so the main ones they have here are taxable brokerage account they all have it Roth IRA they all have it IRA SEP IRA simple IRA a 529 plan which is for those of you who have a child that maybe you want to invest in a college savings account that's a 529 plan interestingly none of them have crypto available so if you are someone who wants to invest in cryptocurrency, then still Robinhood's gonna be for you. That's the winner of all of this in terms of crypto, all right? In terms of research, they all have some research available. Uh, later in the distinguishing factors, we're gonna talk about which of these has the better research and which doesn't. Let's go over what is a stock screener. It's important for you to maybe understand, take a look real quick. Let's show you an example. Okay, so right now we're looking at the Charles Schwab stock screener. So this is where you'd enter things in if you wanted to find specific stocks. So you're screening for specific stocks. I'm just using this as an example so you can see how this can be a great tool for a lot of people. So for example, let's say you just wanna find a stock with a price to earnings ratio less than 10, and you wanna find a stock that's, let's say a small cap stock. So a smaller company, not a big company, a small company. So if you wanna look at only the stocks that meet these different pieces of criteria, you'd hit this, you'd say view matches, and then suddenly you've got the matches of all these different stocks that pop out. And then maybe you can look at stocks and go from there. So back on our screen here, of course, we see that all three of these brokers have access to stock screeners, index fund screeners, and ETF screeners. Next we have low cost index funds or ETFs. They all have very low cost, very efficient ETFs and index funds. So you do not have to worry if you use any of these companies, if you're worried about trying to find a good low cost ETF or index fund. Next is a mobile app. They all have a mobile app, but I will tell you, Charles Schwab, in my opinion, has the worst mobile app. It's not that good. I don't like it. I wish they would uh, redo it, but you know what? It is what it is. I still love Charles Schwab. I just don't like the app. Next we have uh, the distinguishing factors. So these distinguishing factors are the things that I think are gonna help you figure out which of these is gonna be best for you. Now at the end of this, I'm gonna tell you which ones I think are best for my personal opinion, but uh, for you, you may not care about certain things that I care about, so you'll figure out what's best for you for yourself. So if we take a look, if we look at fractional shares first, so what's fractional shares? Let's say you have a $5,000 portfolio and one of the stocks you wanna invest in is Amazon and Amazon sells for over $2,000 per share. And of course, maybe you don't wanna buy 2,000 a share worth of Amazon if you only have $5,000. 
So what you'll do is you'll be able to put it into one of these fractional shares. So you can buy less than a share if you want or different um, denominations of a share. Uh, now Schwab offers this, Fidelity offers this. However, Vanguard, while it does offer this for its funds, it does not offer it for stocks. So keep that in mind. I think that's very important. That's why I put an X here. For variety of research, Schwab has an adequate amount of research, a variety of research. They have maybe around 10 different third-party research companies. I'll show you in a second. But Fidelity also actually has more than Schwab. They have about 16 third-party companies that they offer research from, so that's great. Uh, Vanguard only has about two companies, and it's not, in my opinion, adequate. I think that they should have more. So here I am in my Charles Schwab account, and so if you want to look at reports, I'm currently looking at the stock Big Lots. Stock symbol big, just the stock that I've been kind of looking at recently. And so you've got a ton of info here, but what you want to look at, if you want to see reports, rating summary, and you have reports from Schwab Equity Ratings, they give it a B, Morningstar Equity Research, Credit Suisse, Ned Davis, Argus, CFRI, you have all of these different reports available to you. Okay, after research, we have the Robo Advisory Services. So which of these companies offer a Robo Advisor? Um, so they all offer one, that's great, because a lot of people, I think, can benefit from a Robo Advisor. So the thing is, for the Robo Advisor, only one of these has a free Robo Advisor, which is Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Made a whole video about that, I will link it above so you can take a look at that if you want to. So that's this. Um, but the other ones are going to be, I think, around 0.30% for their Robo Advisor management fee. So if you're okay with paying a fee for Robo Advisor, you can. But if you want to go with Schwab, it's a free Robo Advisor. So might as well go with the free one, in my humble opinion. So next you have the uh, superior platform for trading. Uh, in my opinion, um, here's what's happening, and this is very interesting. Schwab acquired TD Ameritrade. By the way, I've made a video on that. If you want to see it, I will link it right here. So yes, Schwab acquired TD Ameritrade, which means that they're going to start incorporating some of TD Ameritrade's things or uh, platforms and things like that. The important thing that you need to know is that Schwab will be utilizing Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim is the best trading platform in my opinion, which means that eventually Schwab will have great trading capabilities. So anyone who's interested in trading from technical analysis, charting, things like that, you're going to have a great tool with Charles Schwab eventually. Right now, you still have to go to the Ameritrade to get that. Maybe if you're interested in trading, you might want to go to the Ameritrade. However, Fidelity has the next best one and they do have a really good um, uh, platform. So I would also recommend that. Vanguard is not very good. It's Vanguard's very much a long-term buy and hold type strategy investing um, broker. Nothing wrong with it, great for many people. Um, so if you're one of those people that don't care about the trading platform, then it's fine, Vanguard's good. If you care about trading, Vanguard might not be for you. So the next thing we have are these zero commission funds and one of these companies literally offers index funds that cost no money for you to have your money in. So that is gonna be Fidelity. Fidelity has four different zero cost index funds, Fidelity zero funds that you have zero expense ratio inside. Now, right now, expense ratios in any of these ETFs that are just tracking an index are gonna be very, very low. 0.04%, 0.03%. It's almost nothing. However, if you really are really, really, really fee conscious, then these Fidelity Zero funds can be a great tool for you. So here we have the Fidelity Zero fund, FCROX, which is a total market fund. So. It is an index fund tracking the overall entire total stock market. Now this can be compared to the FTSAX, which is the Vanguard, uh, the Vanguard Total Market Index Fund. It's a very, very popular fund and people love this because it's got a very low fee and it's a great fund. But now you can compare this to this FZROX Fidelity Fund and it's got no fee. So you have a zero dollar, a zero percent expense ratio versus a 0.04% expense ratio, which of course 0.04% is very low. However, 
Do you really care about buying into a Vanguard fund when you can have a zero commission, zero expense ratio Fidelity index fund? So you'll have to figure that out for yourself. In my opinion right now, as you'll see later, Fidelity is pretty amazing. So there's also a zero minimum for the Fidelity fund, Fidelity index fund, and there is a 3,000 minimum for the Vanguard fund. If you have less than three, if you have less than three thousand dollars, you can't go in something called the Admiral shares, which is a better share class for expenses purposes. So this begs the question of minimums, and the best minimums in this group of three brokers is, of course, Fidelity because they don't have minimums on their funds or stocks or anything like that. And also Schwab. Schwab has no minimum as well. Now we have banking services. So banking services are important to a lot of people. Some people don't really care about them. We have checking accounts. They all have different checking accounts. So if you're interested in a checking account that's linked to your broker, no problem with any of these. If you're interested in a savings account, then the only thing you're gonna be able to go with is Schwab. So you can also get things like home loans if you have a Schwab account. So Schwab has really an, a range of great things. Um, so Schwab, I think, is distinguished in that effect as well. Okay, we've gone over a lot of stuff. Now it's time for me to tell you what I think is the best, at least for myself, and what I think probably is the best for a lot of people out there. So first, which of the fintech brokers is the best? Now between M1 Finance and Robinhood, I would pick M1 Finance. And I think M1 Finance is better because it has an IRA option, a Roth IRA option, it has the ability to auto-invest, and it has the ability to do rebalancing automatically. Okay, there you have it on the FinTech brokers. I think M1 Finance is the best. Now, the next question is, is M1 Finance better than any of the old school brokers? So what I would say in general is that M1 Finance and Robinhood are really for maybe beginner investors. You're trying to start out. You don't know much about investing yet, and you kind of want to get your feet wet and build a little portfolio and just start getting some experience. If you want more research, if you want more in-depth information, these old school brokers are gonna be the ones that are gonna have better information for you. Okay, so the next question is, what is the best in terms of the old school brokers? Okay, so between these three, I'm confident in the one that I don't like as much as the other two, and that is Vanguard. Vanguard has a huge following, and it was founded by the father of index investing, and for that, it's always gonna be an amazing company. But these days, I think Fidelity and Schwab both have a leg up. Really a main thing for me that's very important is research and Vanguard's research is not as good as Schwab's or Fidelity's. And while Vanguard's always got the benefit of being that low cost index fund company, now Fidelity is better. They have lower cost index funds and they have these Fidelity Zero funds. So the next question is, do I think Fidelity is better than Charles Schwab? And you know I'm a Charles Schwab account holder. I make a lot of videos about Charles Schwab. And now that I've really looked into and delved into Fidelity, I think I have the answer. I almost don't want to admit this, but I think slightly I'm going to give it to Fidelity. I think slightly because of these zero commission index funds, I think that they are the things that are going to put me over the edge and say that I do think Fidelity is a little bit better than Schwab. Now for me, I don't really invest in index funds. I invest in ETFs, but having the ability to invest in an index fund that has zero fees, if I had like a ton of money, would be very, very, very interesting. And I think that that would make me go to Fidelity. And besides that, they have great research, which I'm really interested in. They also have screeners and they have a ton of different things that would allow me to be a very happy Fidelity account holder as well. And so you're probably wondering, will I be closing my Charles Schwab account and opening a Fidelity account? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna be doing that. I think Fidelity only slightly is better than Schwab. It's definitely not worth me transferring my money over there. I really, really, really love Schwab. I'm really happy and comfortable with it. So for me, between Schwab and Fidelity, I don't think you can go wrong. And between M1 Finance and Robinhood, I think M1 Finance is the best. So that's all we have for today's video. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Let me know in the comments which of these you think is the best, which one you're using, are you transferring your money to any of them? Tell me, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And before you go, please hit that like button and subscribe if you wanna see future content like this. So thanks again and please watch another one of my videos by clicking it on the end screen right now.